Hello and welcome to Monarchism Unfilled. I'm one of your hosts, Mikulsk. This is Bronze. This is Ion. And on today's episode, uh, it will be the sequel to LARP in the Cringe, LARP in the Cringe 2, Personal Experience Boogaloo, in which uh, us... We're getting spicy today. Very spicy. In which we'll talk about some of the experiences that have befallen the crew, uh, the hosts, on individual, on individual levels, I guess. So... The, the, this the, uh, this episode might be shorter than usual, it might be longer than usual. So, uh, either of you want to start, or should I? I mean, I think I think you can start just because you probably know the most, like have the have the most comprehensive memory of. Uh, I can I can I can if if you start, I can I can I can fill in. Very well then. Then uh, let's avoid dropping their actual names. So uh, let's start with the joyous experience of K. So you see, uh, dear listener, viewer, or however you experience this podcast in the unforeseen future, uh, K is was well. Actually, I still have, I have it on good authority that he that he hasn't changed much. Was a bloke that uh, we came across a couple of uh, some years ago. And uh, like uh, like all those cringe monarchists, he had his own specific variation of monarchism that he wanted to create and enforce. If memory serves, it was something along the lines of the painfully generic uh, national monarchism. He had his own manifesto. If if the red flags aren't uh, aren't blaring, yes, it's so bad flags blare now. Um, oh, they blare, and, they, and especially they they blare because. In 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 the manifestos of of whatever you find on the internet, right? The font selection. My God. Anyway, sorry. If it's not Comic Sans, I'm not going to read it. Um, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, it's it's probably Papyrus or Oswald or something. I think it was Papyrus. Impact. Um. <laughs> Um, to, to, to return to. So, in this, uh, in this, um, in, in, in the project of national monarchism, it was obviously a focus uh, uh, on America. So, it was a manifesto slash constitution, as many manifestos done uh, done by Americans are. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the joys of this uh, start very early. On the topic of who should be king, because this was still ostentatiously monarchist, uh, and the, the the document late found a a number of requirements, such as be patriotic, militarily competent, etc., etc., etc. A truly long list of of like requirements for who should be king. Uh, I think it oc- occupied a full page. Uh, it ended with the final remark. Uh, Upon uh, I can constant I can uh, see that no one uh, no one but me feels feels this page long degrees of remarks. Therefore, the king should be me. So that that that, that sets the tone. That sets the tone for the rest of the document, uh, in which glorious things such as uh, defining the racial stock of the nation was also something. Uh, it's, a, it's a broad trend, you know. There's there's. Right, there's the sort of, ah, what is that font? Then there's the, oh, wait, this, 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 is, this, this is a bit weird. There's, there's a solid picture of what, wait, what? And then, and then, bam, it's the racism it hits you. That's, that's, the, that's the manifesto internet roller coaster. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's quicker than uh, just, bam, the, the, the racism hits you. It, sometimes it's just like, this is racist, but also... Um, pretentious about, I don't know, like reintroducing feudalism into America or whatever specific um, specific thing it is. Um, even, even if that worked, even if they had a, like, like it's, it's, it's inter- reintroducing feudalism, but it's not even really feudalism. It's what if feudalism was on a 24 diet of meth? That's, well, that's what they are typically defending. Like Jesus Christ. Oh, and, and let's never forget. Like, I watched Braveheart. That's what I think feudalism is, and I want it. Has to be Braveheart, of course. 
bonus points bonus points if they're if it's Braveheart, but they are an Ulster Scot. Just bonus points all around. Um, but no, no. Uh, another thing. Well, another thing of these. Uh, sh- let's 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 call these like manifesto riders because although Kay's is the one who comes most to mind, we have received more than our fair share of manifestos. Um, a, a good example uh, is um, these these documents often have a moralizing character to them. They they want to establish a more moral society. Normally, this is tentatively, uh, in general, uh, not a bad thing, but uh, th- their moralities sometimes get uh, very wacky, such as uh, we all know the prime virtue of intolerance. I saw that written down in Kay's manifesto and in three others that got sent my way over the years. Intolerance as a virtue. Uh, 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 the, the, uh, never fail to, to include that fake quote by Aristotle with the tolerance is the last virtue of a dying society. That that is that is always quite funny. Um, I mean, I <laughs> yeah, because it was it was I think it was said by some some racist uh, American guy in, in the fifties. That's that's where that comes from. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, put 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 a bit put a big picture of Plato's statue and put the, the word Aristotle under there. That's bam. Bam. Bun. Brilliant. Beautiful. Uh, obviously, that's all you need. Well, you like, know. It's even better when it's the only the only virtue of to which they prefer, they to which they provided a quote for. All the others are just blank. But that one, that one has the quote. Uh, Not a real good thing, but still. Uh, but uh, so, but no, no, it, it gets better. It, it, it is uh, when it comes to the to how this to how their morality gets informed, enforced, and well, people, uh, if you thought death squads were an extreme, well, these people tend to fe- tell to, uh, tell uh, tend to think that death squads are but a base requirement of a functioning society. Even gets more hilarious when they are when they are anti-masturbation death squads. You heard it here, right, folks? Anti-masturbation death squads. Oh yeah, you know, um, as as um, as one does, as one does, um, as one does. But I'm. Um, I think what is what is interesting about this sort of type of aggressively racist. I found that usually they're either um, Eastern Europeans or Americans, um, and when they're Eastern European, it's usually it's a kind of just like it's a strange yeah it's it's usually just kind of some kind of ethno nationalism. Um, so you know you hate Poles or something if you're Russian, um, whereas with Americans, it seems that a lot of the time. Um, it's usually people who are fascist or fascist adjacent, um, white nationalists, so forth, who also then think that we should have, you know, uh, Washington as, or some descendant of Washington as a king. Um, and obviously also like, you know, military leader, that sort of thing. Um, but Nikos, sorry, what were you... You were saying further about his his manifesto in particular. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I, I was actually going to mention how uh, the most bizarre requirement I've ever seen to like who should be king would be had to be a hundred percent genetically confirmed white, not Caucasian, just white. One hundred percent. Yeah, because that's what, how what that works. means. 100% white because that's how it works. Uh, God, but it's yeah. The, the, but the the K's manifesto took took the cake in that it was it was not the most egregious, but it was like the most encompassing in terms of in terms of ridiculousness. The most ridiculous one I've ever seen. Ah, uh, wait. I think I never told you guys about this one. Did, did, did I ever did I ever t- tell you about the manifest the, the theme parkist manifesto? 
I will take the silence as a no. Okay, so theme parkist manifesto. So to, 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 to give context, uh, theme parkism in this context refers to the idea that uh, basically nations should be should be uh, independent, sovereign, and like have their own distinct cultures. This is typically decried as being a theme parkish because typically this comes up with uh, other requirements to uh, to preserve the culture, and these requirements tend to be so stringent that it reduces the culture to a to a to a theme park. So a lot of so a lot of uh, so a lot of like apologists for like uh, so it, it's 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 more of a. Um, a term of abuse to like those people who like defend to who like defend local traditions and national cultures, etc., to such a point that they become stifling of them. But this this dude took it to 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 another to another extreme. I never actually even talked to the to, to the dude in question. Did it was just shown to me, the document, and um, I'll never forget. Race mixing is to be banned. Uh, uh, ethnic ethnic ethnicity mixing is to be banned, national mixing is to be banned, uh, any cultural alterations are to be banned, and this should all be enforced upon the, uh, upon, under the threat of collective genocide. So to, to, to give context, this, the, 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 theme, the, the, the crazy theme park is manifesto called for a world government that would enforce, uh, that via genocide would enforce Upmost uh, national uh, uh, homogeny or uh, human heterogeny, on the basis that any uh, that any peoples who engage in any kind of mixing, uh, be it cultural, linguistical, or even political, I think it's been a few years, should be genocide on the fate of the earth on the criteria that for them to engage in that, in, in such actions, they had they had proven beyond a shadow of doubt that they had degenerated and corrupt and were corrupt and therefore had to be killed. So yeah, a world government for the sake of genocide is probably the most absurd I've ever received. Yes, I, would, I would say that, that that sort of one major group of sort of online is is the manifesto writers. That you know they've got they've got ideas. They want to rack up points on the base -tometer. They pen a, a manifesto. But there's, but there's another slightly related but contrasting group that I like to call either the think tankers or the policy makers. And, and these guys don't really tend to write manifestos. They, they usually like to they usually like to you know communicate in the form of video essays. And they may or may not have like a clear sense of politics. But what they do have are policies that they are very eager to rattle off. You know. So, you know, even if they have no clear concept in their mind of what they think government is for, you know, they have specific ideas about how tax brackets should be. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, I, th I think it comes from a desire because, you know, I think they've seen the manifesto writers and realize their delusion. And so to ground themselves in reality, they've thought, what do what do the real policymakers do? I want to do one of them. And so they just come up with this list of stuff. You know, they, they look at a list of macroeconomic paradigms or whatever, and they're like, Yeah, I want I want one of them. So, you know, the stuff you see here, you know, they're like uh, flat taxes, gold standards, neo-mercantilism, that's very in. You pick something from the past and then you randomly change it. Or you go the completely other way, you're like Bitcoin monarchy, uh, you know. Oh, God, the Bitcoin fuckers. Ugh. Yeah, there's, you know, they just they just take some... You know, they don't really have any concepts of anything, but they'll make a tax bracket system. That's not even for any country. It's just in general. Back general purpose universal tax brackets, of course. Yeah, you know, there's just, right, and they're always very neat. They're like, I don't know, you make more than 100K, whatever, bam, that's 12%. Why? How? I don't know, but if someone asked them, in your ideal world, 
what would the tax brackets look like? They they've got you covered. You know how how was citizenship awarded? Covered, you know. The, the best part is when they don't even have an ideal world. They just have policy in a vacuum. They don't have any politics, never. No, it's pure policy. Pure praxology, as it were. Yeah, there's just right, and and I th I think I think if anything, the spirit is admirable. Well, but, it, but, it's admirable, but, and it's but admirable it until work it's like that. You, you got to have like a fundamental world view before you can delineate specific policies. That's just typically this. That's, yeah, typically in this context, ideology. Uh, but no, no. But like, it, it, it gets frankly ridiculous. Like, you had people with so little understanding of not only the real world, but also of like how how countries work. Like, there. Uh, God, I can't remember what was a specific uh, suggestion, but it was something about. Um, uh, for something about border control. And I remember that the policy was just this, this universal blanket statement of, oh, the government should background check every single person who enters the borders. Uh, and upon asked how would they do that, considering some of these people don't even have documents or use fake names, uh, the, the the response. So, I, mean, I mean, it takes quite a. It takes some time to background check someone, and you know, people need to cross borders on a timely basis, and you know, yeah. I think the, the no notion of logistics, no lo notion of logistics. But yeah, po 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 policymakers are fair are fairly common, but are not as cringe as like the um, manifestors. But but none of the categories are are mutually exclusive. The over the overlap is where you get more the most cringe. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. someone could have a have a. I've seen manifestos where it's like the death squads will have twenty one members. They will each have a sergeant major and two corporals. You know, you you can you can and to get really into the nitty gritty of it as well. You can you can mix and match those. Would often would often atrocious effects for the collective sanity of mankind. Another another uh, group we've all dealt with. In a, uh, in a in a semi in a semi consistent fashion is the ever traditional oh you know um, I just want to genocide a people just just no justification worth your uh, worth for them no structure just insert group here insert genocide method that does happen yeah but it gets it just gets ridiculous as time goes on because it's it, it's it's not even race oh let's genocide blank race that's to be expected it's the fucking internet it's not it's not even genocide blank continent or blank nation no because also sadly those are still fairly common it's when you start to have uh, to to have people who go on the deep end of like racialist slash nationalistic uh, logic half uh volumes half germans should be genocided because they are a structural danger to the flemish race is a thing <laughs> I've heard. that's yeah sometimes sometimes it can get can get strangely specific like what what's that group of people like? What's the actual number of that? How how is this blood quotas? At some point, you feel like they were just wronged by one specific person because they they got they got you know they 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 jumped the queue at Pret a Manger or something, and now they're trying to make up an ethnic category specific enough to only include that one person. It's oh god. It's it it's it it just never ends. God, I'm trying I'm trying to. Uh, God, what was the most absurd thing I've one I've heard? Was it? Oh yeah, genocide all quadroons. That was one. Ah oh, God, fucking. Uh. And okay, okay, for context. This is a very ranty episode, by the way. I just you know that's yeah. you got you got to get ready for it. 
from inside all quadroons. Now, I know that in some areas of the planet, uh, quadroons refers to a specific um, to a specific like ethnicity, depending upon the region. But no, this person said, uh, affirmed to me that no, 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 no. Any human being that is one fourth to anything has to be killed. Uh, when asked, uh, when asked to provide a a, a, a justification, uh, the the uh, the answer came um, because people who are one fourth anything are too mentally unstable to be contributed members of society. So, ch check your blood quotas, fellas. I guess just Jesus Christ, fucking. Yeah. There's, there's, there, and and there's a whole variety of, of cringe. Then there's the, the, I don't, I, either the, I don't know, the neo dandies or the aestheticists. The aestheticists, but those are a plague. The, the, that this one's common, and they, they come in, you know, and and they can, they can become. They are not mutually exclusive with any of the other categories. I think has been mutually exclusive. N not, not so far, no. You know, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're really interested, right? Like their dream is um, to to sort of go back to the aesthetics of the, I don't insert area, insert era between sixteen hundred and nineteen hundred. In, in Western Europe, potentially Russia, and you know, and then and then they're like, I wanna, I wanna, you know, like, and you know, they get really carried away with the palaces and, and the clothes and, and the regalia, and they're like, wow, this is this is so based, and I wanna, I wanna marry a Habsburg so I can I can wear the Order of the Golden Fleece, and then we can we can we can get build the neo Baroque palaces. You know. I mean, I think at the point where it's like, oh, you know, I'm really into the clothing. Um, at that point, I think it usually just like that they're, they're usually gay as well, but like uh, repressed and sort of don't realize or like maybe do realize that they're gay, um, which is something that I've seen at various points that it seems like you know, people with peer, uh, profile pictures where it's like um, some medieval king in um, in what would be considered a dress now. Um, not to generalize, um, but that does seem to be a a trend that I have seen. Um, is is you know, uh, self repressed gay men um, who have or self repressed or self repressed lesbians? I have also seen it. That is true. Um, yeah, they, they, you know, but it, uh, yeah, so it could be the clothes, it could be the buildings, it could be the music, right? You know, typically they they will say stuff like, "No great, no good music has been written after eighteen hundred because they think that the reason that the the classics of the Western musical canon are good because they are old," you know, you know, like you know. You know, if 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 you pointed a gun to their head, they could not name a single musical idea in any of Mozart's works. Yet they claim they are unique because they listen, but they, they are unique in some way for listening to Mozart. The the ass that's the aesthetics, I suppose, are are a, a god forsaken plague amongst among, among well, like they're, they're first common and B. They're so fucking vapid. Like, like there is, they equate, because it gets pretty, pretty goddamn annoying when they equate, oh, aesthetics with morality. Now there is a reason, there is, there are reasons to believe that good morality produces good aesthetics, uh, but they tend to believe the exact opposite. Good aesthetics produce good morality. So if, so the most political they get, well, the most political, the most policy, uh, slash wider societal context uh, they get in terms of thinking does not go beyond, oh, I'm going to gentrify the planet. 
That's it, it, also it, also just you know because I've it, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. The aestheticism is often th uh, a thinly veiled racism. That's a fairly recurrent theme. I feel um, it's 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 so recurrent. Racism and genocide. That yeah. Um, Yeah. Also, um, just like how you know the part for I and I didn't mention this, the policy makers, the policies are usually sometimes even unawarely of the policy maker quite you know racist. In but usually they're they're dog whistle racist. So they're like, Oh yeah, in my ideal society we'll have a Keynesian system based on the gold standard and also loads of respect for the police. If you, you know. Yeah, which in the, in the US means uh, can mean yeah. a variety of things. Um, I think the... the We'll promote law and order. Yeah, promotion what, law and order. Um, whatever I that think, means. Yeah, whatever that means. I mean, I think it's, it's quite interesting um, to see the sort of... the spread of people, as it were. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think um, I think in general, I would say that um, the other interesting sort of type uh, that you see are people who claim some kind of noble descent um, or some kind of relationship to nobility, um, and then use that. Essentially, it, it's. The, I think it's it's kind of like the the monarchist equivalent of the tendency of uh, left wing people to be like, I would be the camp guard in the in the gulag, as it were, um, where it's like you know I would be, I would be the prime minister, but it, you know I've been appointed prime minister because this is an absolute monarchy and we don't have um, like we're anti parliamentarian or whatever, um, and. It's just kind of, yeah, it's just kind of insane, I think, at that point when you feel like, oh, yeah, and I would be in charge. Yeah, sometimes it's not even in charge. Sometimes, if, if, especially if they're an aestheticist, right, it, it'd be, you know, I'd be master of, of ceremonies or during the coronation, I would, I would lift the, I would hand the king the sword or, you know, whatever. Very important, very symbolic institutions. But no, they, now you might think, oh, but this is this is less insane than the oh, I would be king, dudes. No, 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 because the the I would be king, dudes, have a certain existential bluntness that that kind of blunts the, the deal. No, no, no. These the 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 the, uh, the peerage impersonators. Yes, that that's what I'm going to stop referring to them. The peerage impersonators. Take are, are, are just that bit extra from uh, fabricated genealogies that are physically impossible or make no temporal sense to uh, literally uh, to literally claim to literally claims to, to trash claims as it were. I have had a person proudly proclaim, mind you. Uh, descent from uh, one of uh, Augustus II Strong's, the Strong's three hundred bastards, and how and how that uh, and how and how, you know, how that was enough, you know, because descent from bastardy apparently counts now. It's uh, it's, oh uh, God. And, and you know what was mo 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 most bizarre about this? It wasn't a Pole that was making this claim. It wasn't a, a, a person descended from Poles. It was an Argentinian who was making this claim. F from what he later told me, apparently seven generations beforehand, he apparently, uh, apparently he did indeed fact have someone who married into the family, who was descendant from one of Augustus the Strong's bastards. You do the math and tell me if that, if, the, if this, if, if seven generations is, is not a bit too early for even Augustus the Strong, but okay. 
No, I mean, I think the, the, the peerage in personages, I, I do agree with that point of uh, there's a slight difference between, you know, and I would be king and that because also I find with, with the kind of, you know, the bluntness of, well, actually, no, I would be in charge. Um, those Is that sort of like a like blatant design, uh, desire for power? Well, I feel like the peerage impersonators, they don't, they don't so much want power as purpose. You know, they want some reason, you know, right? And and in their sort of mind's eye, being the guy, you know, whom the king asks advice of or who, you know, performs some function for the king serves that function. Of giving them purpose. Mm, I think also with the people who are like, you know, I would be in charge. Usually also they're, um, they're less pretentious often, like um, less sort of into aesthetics or whatever. It's just a kind of blunt, uh, you know, I would be the enlightened despot as it were. Um, which, yeah, it's almost less cringy. I mean, it, it, it's cringier in a way and then less cringy in another way. Uh, so it, it's, it's yeah, quite strange. Um, I think that's a, that's a fairly common type, at least that I've seen. Um, I think the, the aestheticists are very, um, very, uh, like well known as well. I mean, Makos, you were talking about a person called V earlier. Um, and yeah, I think we can discuss some archetypes starting from, from that, uh, from the discussion of that person. Um, and so what, what did you want to say with relation to them? Uh, honestly, I completely forgot because, because, because I just remembered we're kind of ignoring a very, although minoritarian, uh, arch archetype that is, that is perhaps the first one that could be exclusive. Uh, the Strasserites. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, dear listener. So, context. Strasseritism. What is it? It's it's it was the move. It was historically speaking and historiographically speaking, more uh, more so, the left leaning tendency within uh, Nazism. The right wing tendency is Hitlerism, which is what tip, what many think about when they uh, when they think about. Uh, Nazism. So, why Strasserism? Or more accurately, why would monarchists uh, run into Strasserites, the left-leaning tendency? You see, I can't remember which one of the Strasser brothers was it, but I think one of them had a massive hard-on for rurality and, uh, and agrarianness. And, and, and apparently that's bridge enough. And... Um, Although this, although 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 it's it, although I'm willing, I'm open to the idea that there might be non-cringy stress rights. All the stress rights we have encountered have been um, have been a doozy, to say the least. It's where to even begin. I I, I just every single time I I, I try I, I think of something to say I just. It's, it, okay, so, so dear listener, we've talked about the genocidals, we've talked about the aesthetics, the uh, aesthetics, and we've talked about the the the, the policy makers with our ideology. The 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 the, the stress right in in it could be seen as a mixture of all three. In that the sheer insanity that pervades them is, uh, is, and the hypocrisy as well, because all the others will give the benefit of the doubt of being uh, fucking cringe and what have you, but not hypocrites. The Strasserites, to a T, uh, have so far been hypocrites of the highest order. But besides an insano economic policy slash system, that I don't think I have met anyone to actually be able to condense into a single sentence or a phrase for that matter or whatever type or a world of view just like uh, this is this is how I think the world works you know 
Yeah, the, uh, able, never able to pr to present their ideas in a, in a continuous manner. Uh, always, uh, Jesus, just just, uh, just thinking about because now I'm thinking about V, but there there are others. I've met so I met too many goddamn Strasserites in my short life. Oh, God. I mean, the thing I think as well with Strasserism, why it's so popular is just because it's like. Hmm. How how can I be racist, but also into a like a a really massive state, like a like a really really massive state, and then you're like, hmm, let's combine my two loves, racism or ethno nationalism, and being really into the state, and then you're like, hmm, what what is this? And then it's like, whoa. Strasserism. That's cool. That's based. Let's. That's. That. I saw Wikipedia about it, and it was like, it's obscure. It's like it's enough of a thing that some people have heard about it on the internet, but if if you said it to someone on the street, they probably wouldn't know what it was. So yeah, that's cool. I'm 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 a cool person on Discord. Uh, cool. I know, my name starts with a uh, with an asterisk, so I'm at the top of the Discord line. Nice, nice. God, but 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 no, like like. Okay, dear, listen. Depending upon your circles on the internet, you you may have run into the trans Strasserite meme. Uh, it isn't a meme. It's very real. It's very fucking real, and. And it's worse than you could possibly imagine, basically. Nothing against trans people. Absolutely nothing. A significant portion of, in fact, all trans people I've met in real life, perfectly decent people. Fantastic. Discord. The score gets wacky. Because, you know, although I, don't, although I guess I have only talked at length with one uh, trans stress, right? I have seen too many trans stress rights in a server that was dedicated to, to right-wing ideologies of which trans stress rightism was a thing in itself within that server. It was hell. It, the meme is real and it's, and it's worse than, a, than any nightmare you could have possibly think. It's, it's so bad. But, 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 but like it, 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 it just gets so weird because in the others, there's clearly like, uh, oh, we hate people. In trans stress rights, there's clearly a strong level of self hate. I have seen some oh, like that. There's a lot going there. <laughs> there's just too much going in there. Like e even on non trans stress rights, there's a lot going in there. That is a bit beyond just being cringe on an ideological concept. It's, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think the, the, the big thing there really is, is just, um, you know, it's like how based and edgy can I be to annoy my parents? Um, the most based and edgy that I can be is being this insane thing that, you know, only a certain number of people know about. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, that's how people, that's how people decide to be quote unquote based uh, or quote unquote red pilled. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of, just kind of cringe. Um, I think. But, but it's, it, it... To, to, to like to, to like okay let's to like to like develop a little bit the 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 the, the stress right slash trans stress right the uh, uh, a thing I'd like to point out is on their ethics because until this point generally speaking the ethics have been consistently trash that the, they haven't been consistently inconsistent but overall still trash which is the issue with most stress rights the the the, the uh, like you I have had trans stress rights uh, to my face tell me we need to kill the gays because uh, gay uh, uh, gay uh, gay sex is 
is degenerate. But, you know, pedophilia is based and cool. You know, straight, straight up pedophilia apologia on the basis of not being degenerate is is a low. A low I never thought I would no, it's a, it's 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 a it's a it's a, it's it's a Mariana trench low. I mean it's yeah. Very, very low. Uh. Speaking of lows, let's go to a slightly less deep trench in this context. The rad trads. Yeah, so, th so the rad trads, or the tradoids, or the bastoids, they're, they're, they're not so much a specific group as, as, as a trend in many groups. You know, they've, they've, ta they've taken a bit, you know, like you'll find trad aestheticists or manifesto writers, you know, but you know stuff. You know common common themes are the Crusades, feudalism, Pius the Ninth. You know it's it's all in this, and and that's not to say that they understand these things necessarily, but they just they just they just know of them. Now these are the people, you know, who who who, who listen. To you know, night Templar chants one hour mixes on YouTube, and then talk to you about how we should do another crusade, and then and then and then he will pre in you, and then perhaps he will lead the crusade. Perhaps he will somehow be involved in some sort of strange quest for purpose. No, no, we have the, the, the most annoying thing about the rad trans is how trans they ain't in any effective capacity. Well, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't really understand the concept. You know, that's that's where you know you draw the line between what who someone you might you might call a traditionalist and a trad, or even just something that is traditional. Right in the sense that the rad trads interact with the concept of tradition a holistically. To them, often the concept of a tradition is something that existed in the past, and and you don't really understand. But perhaps, the, but there is often some sort of some sort of kernel of truth some deep deep within the aestheticist. Uh, whatever and uh you know they usually they like they love to throw around the words you know modernist uh futurist you know just sort of or you know everything that that, that post dates 1915 is modernist and bad that's generally how it works Yeah, never mind that the, that often these rad trans are just conservatives, but uh, they think they're spicy. But they're completely with their completely stale takes. Yes, I'd I'd say there's a big interaction between the trads and uh, the waspoids. For for reference, uh, and uh, for what uh, what. Um, what, it, what uh, Bronze here means when he says the waspoids. Waspoids are people who look at 1950s America and think this is the height of tradness. Can't get more trad than this. Yeah, and, and there, there can often be intersections between, you know, trads, right? So, right, like talking a lot about Vatican II, that sort of, because, you know, it's the right the transition from the 50s to the 60s and then that was bad that's more of a tradoid thing though massive obsession with vatican 2 you know you know i'm not saying you know there's not things that you can talk about or criticize there but sort of without a complete lack of understanding of what actually happened and what it is sort of a just a 
you know, it happened and they changed stuff, therefore it's bad. Never mind that they don't even understand how to, but no, no, but, uh, but to the more traditionalist inclined amongst our audience, because we do have some, this is not an attack on you specifically, because most of you, I hope, are kind of aware that, oh, wait, these precious uh, traditions, this, these uh, uh, until recently unbroken links of, uh, of practice and thought uh, that connect us with our past and grounded us in reality, uh, they were destroyed uh, typically by, like, uh, capitalism, give or take. Sometimes it was, I indeed, in fact, individual action, but capitalism is, like, the structural reason why so many of it went under. And many, and, and many of the, and, and again, the difference between a traditionalist and a trad, the traditionalist typically is aware of why it fell. Uh, the trad isn't, so you have people saying, oh, yeah, we need to return to feudalism, to reach the most stratist society, but also uh, CEOs must be given a, 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 a title because they are CEOs and they're making a lot of money. Generally, generally, the distinction falls somewhere that there's a great loss of nuance. Sometimes they don't even know what the word nuance means. Yeah, yeah. Well, so if, if you perhaps feel call, called out by, by this and are furiously typing in the comments that your takes on Vatican II are very nuanced and charitable, which I'm sure, I'm sure they are. Then you know it's it's it, it's not it's not about you, unless maybe it is. Uh, but, but. We're talking about people who, who who whose understanding of like tradition is this. I have a pretty picture on my mind. I like I should force this pretty picture on to everything I see uncritically. So. And, and, and oh, and, and, and in a surefire way to, to tell them apart, ask them what tradition is. That's yeah, but but the, the waspoids that they don't that they're, they're perhaps not so so long so long winded in uh, in in their in their sort of reaching into the past. Generally, they're that they're satisfied with you know, uh, you know, pictures of suburbia from the fifties and you know the Great American Songbook, or or, the, or or in Britain, you know, the idea of oh yeah, well we had uh, you know we had national service and that sorted us right out, and then you know it was character building, and uh, it was great, and we rebuilt, and you know we we got all these you know and and you know and then they're like. And and they're probably intrigued by McMansions and uh, skyline pictures of New York in the thirties. Uh, another thing uh, to 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 remind is the casual black race. and white pictures in general, and lot of lot of lot of racism, lot of a uh, oh yeah, well society was orderly back then, and you know. I did, uh, no, no, I mean you. you did you ever find one like that, that openly defended malicious architecture for you? Because I sure have. Yeah, so th that it often bottoms out in in defenses of of uh, of neoliberal capitalism, often without understanding what you know, like what 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 a deflationary paradigm is, or who Milton Friedman was, or perhaps they 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 know the name Milton Friedman and they think he is based. And Keynes is associated with the sort of big government body, and then, right, potentially because potentially they could be in the sort of policymaker sphere as well, and you know that all houses must have white picket fences or whatever. Bit of a caricature, but yeah. All slums, and that all slums should be killed with death squads. Yeah. Oh, uh, also, an, uh, another variation of this, that, uh, of, of the rad trad, uh, Pinochet fanboys. Those are real. Well, th th those are real, but no. The, the, the Pinochet fanboys are basically trads, but for, but for Pinochet. They do not necessarily have to be from Chile. Uh, 
Ah, gosh. Okay, so we talked about assets, uh, pyrogen impersonators, manifesto makers, the Strass rights. Policy makers, sort of some broad trends. Oh, yeah. Um, for, uh, the, the fake religious people. I, we, we have to talk about them. Often going under the other categories, but sure, yeah. yeah but, uh, but, uh, but the fake religious people are, are like are like a, a I, I would laugh if they weren't so numerous. The uh, like okay, so the the fake religious people. I'm I'm sure I'm sure listener you you run into them, um, all uh, everywhere really. Because they're they're not they're not a very discord or monarchist uh, environment specific, so I'm I'm sure you've met them. No, the 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 fake religious person is a person who has the most superficial of understandings of their own faith or other faiths uh, in general. And I'm not even talking about oh this is oh this is just your your crazy evangelical religion. No 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 no. We we, we I have met. Uh, bullshit Muslims, bullshit Christians. On one specific occasion, bullshit, uh, bullshit Buddhists, uh, bullshit uh, Shintoists. One as well. Uh, bullshit Orthodoxes. A lot of those. Um, what else? Bullshit pagans. Yes, not only is paganism in, within of itself bullshit, but with but in <laughs> you, you, you had to you had to go there with the spice. Um, no, there, no, sorry. And also, Hindus aren't pagan. It's all monisms all the way. Ontological cowardice is not approved by this podcast. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think but, the 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 kind of like the the you know. The white, you know, white nationalist uh, Viking worshiper. That's like the. Uh, I, 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 under that, I, I want to bring in a, 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 a you know, new the thing. famed the famed ethno purists, the Vikings, and like uh, Germanic pagans who were known for always marrying within their own ethnicity, would clearly have approved of uh, of like white nationalism. Um, yeah, that's why you know that's why they went to like the Netherlands or like or like uh, Turkey basically uh, settled there. That's like why or, or Russia. Um, that's clearly why they never engaged in any race mixing whatsoever. Um, none. None, none at, at all. all. Yeah, none. and and related to this, Optian is. Uh, the sort of the neo naturalists, which in a sense are estates, but they're 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 big into like we gotta we gotta live off the land that you know possibly possibly linked with the you know eco fascism, you know, right? Their bookshelf consists of um, uh, Petty Lincola and the, the SAS Survival Guide, um, you know. The we gotta we gotta we gotta. Not not quite an arco primitivist, but sort of in the area that you know they've got a lot of camping equipment and they think they're harder than they are. Uh, look ups to Uncle Ted fails to understand why Uncle Ted did what he did, or 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 uh, or that Ted Kaczynski had a famous hatred of anarcho primitivists. Yeah, but uh, you know, you know, based Uncle Ted, you know, that's that's on the basedometer, you know, and that they own many pocket knives, and then you know, because you got to, you, you know, city living makes you weak, and then and uh, and then and then you know, it's a lot of racism, you know, and like I've and this is a genuine take that I've 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 seen, which is that you know, uh, race mixed people started living in cities because they were not particularly adapted for any sort of natural climate and so the true purebred Aryan lives in the woods yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean it's, it's just it's just sort of sort of complete bullshit land of just wow 
to, to uh, but no, no, it, it gets even better when when they say that, but they're pagan, in which in which upon which they also affirm that you know only true Aryan descended uh, people, because all others are animals, are the only ones who can be allowed to worship Odin, to or, or the Germanic gods, as it were, and anyone who 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 has the insufficient blood proficiency of uh, eighty percent, whatever that means in this context. Uh, should be killed for blaspheming, basically. Yeah, and and this this is kind of a dig at a specific person, but I'm I'm not that miffed at it because they are a public person. They might also make weird racist board games. Oh yeah, um, I mean Varg Varg is not specifically a, a monarchist, um, but he well, no, has... but he's he's related to the vine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know why you were why you were being like, "Oh, let's protect his identity," because he's yeah. never going to listen to this. And, he's never going to uh, listen to this, <laughs> and frankly, if he does, he can he can take a fat one. No, um, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, he's he is uh, just quite funny at the level of like, you know, like posting on Twitter about how autism is just like your your un. Uh, like the fact that the city can't tame you it, it is expressed as autism um, or, or similar takes which I mean you, you know you see these and then it's like um, the kind of people who like you know they read Nietzsche and they're like oh I want the, the Ubermensch to be in charge which is very funny when it sort of gets into like bodybuilding aesthetics and then you're like, oh, tribalism, this kind of stuff, which also overlaps with this. And then it's usually then it's yeah, there's, kind of a lot, there's, a lot, that... there's a lot of, you know, bro science and, um, you know, despite being very into nature, you know, apparently, apparently juicing with aftermarket Egyptian supplements from the web is also part of nature. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's Odin. You know. Yeah, Odin wants you to use steroids. Um, <laughs> clearly, um, but yeah, I think in general, there's. I think to to continue would be we could probably fill several hours of of inane yeah. ramblings about uh, various people online. But I think we'll call it a day here. Um, yeah, I, th I, think, I, think, a... I think I think we can return back to this topic some faithful accursed day. Um, yeah. When we've interacted with yeah. more more cursed types, um, yeah. See when you know, yeah, you know, but hopefully percent. this this video can act as a guide to navigate your way through the the cursed jungle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, sort of for a final final uh, a final sort of little sweet sweet thing would be uh, people who want Donald Trump to become like emperor of the United States. Um, that I think is the most cursed kind of person. Um, but yeah, this it's is, really is the most important, isn't it? Uh -huh. yeah. Sorry, did you say? It, 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 like Donald Trump, Donald Trump emperor worshippers. Uh, yes, those are the most cursed, I think. But this is a bit more of his own. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was just saying they, they are literally the mix, the perfect, the cursed mix, the Venn diagram of all that has been said. They are at the center. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that. But this has been uh, Monarchism Unfiltered. I'm I am. It's been Bronze. And I've been Mikosk. And we're signing off. <laughs>